Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at engine cooling, specifically cow flaps. Let's get started. So first things first though, something you have to remember about any sort of these airplanes, especially these small GA planes, is the fact that they're air-cooled engines. Now uh, you're probably going, yeah, we do that. Well, let me show you what I mean. So if I actually were to zoom into the front of this plane real quick, like the engine inside of this is actually a big flat engine, and some of the air comes through this hole, some of the air comes through this hole, and this is our air intake hole as well. Um, that's the only air. This kind of looks really serious. <laughs> Neither. Where's your sunglasses, guys? Also, is there like, if this plane comes a rocket and don't come a knock? Oh, anyway. So, um, if you take a look on the front, these are the only holes that this airplane is getting cooling air into. Remember, that's the only thing that cools this airplane. So, one of the things that they decided to do in order to help facilitate this process is they provide some aircraft with these things called cow flaps. Now, what is a cow flap? A cow flap is a little panel on the bottom of the engine, sometimes it's on the sides of the engine, in this case it's going to be popping out right here, that enables you to actually allow more airflow through the engine. So let me go ahead and grab that and slam that to the open position. And now you can see how that's open, now the airflow is going to be more directed downwards to help improve the <laughs> I'm sorry, that rocket's cracking me up. That improves the uh, airflow coming down the actual part of the aircraft. So you're sitting there going, well, doesn't that create extra drag? Yeah, it does. It indeed does create extra drag. As a matter of fact, in the sky lane, which I've got some practice actually flying now in the real world, you can actually hear them when you deploy them. Like there's a little bit of a kind of a thing like that. It's not the end of the world. It's like two knots, but it's there. So now you're saying, so how do we control the temperature of the engine? Well, there's a couple different things. Now, first of all, we have airspeed. Now, second thing, of course, we have the cow flaps. Third, of course, we can set our throttle here. And of course, we can also be adjusting our mixture. The combination of these is what's gonna dictate the heat of your engine. So this particular aircraft, let me go float over here, provides us with a couple different gauges for the temperature of the engine. We have our oil temperature, which is not a bad measurement. We have our cylinder head temperature, which is excellent measurement. And then we have our turbine inlet temperature, which is actually because we're a turbocharged aircraft. Think this is exhaust gas temperature. This one's usually only for leaning. We don't care about this so much unless it's usually higher and usually low. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this plane. I'm going to go ahead and slam close the cow flaps. And I'm going to go ahead and push the throttle forward while well, hitting the park brake there real, real hard. Now, the real plane, you can actually get up the full throttle without actually driving around anywhere. So we should be dancing, but we shouldn't actually be moving. Okay, so what's going to happen here? So the first thing you're going to notice is that the cylinder head temperature is going to fly up. Look at this. Our oil temperature is going up. Our cylinder head temperature is going through the roof right now. I'm showing cylinder head temperatures. Oh my gosh, that is, that, that's incredible. Keep going and going and going and going and going. Now, like, why is it getting so hot so fast? Remember, all that airflow, the only thing providing airflow for right now for us is that giant propeller, which unfortunately is uh, trying to take us halfway down the runway here. So because of that, I think I'm actually gonna have to call my little experiment short here, but that's okay. You can already see that we're dangerously hot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull that throttle back. Plane's gonna start slowing down and it's gonna slowly start giving up some of that heat. Usually oil temperature comes first, then the cylinder head temperature is gonna start coming down a little bit as well. You can see just how ridiculously hot that got in a very, very short time. Remember, this is based on you know metal. So metal, like once it got heat, it's gonna hang on to it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna slap these cow flaps open. Now the cow flaps need airflow in order to work properly. So what we expect to see is the cylinder head temperature to stay at about the same amount. Uh, the reason it's doing this is because remember the airflow is only being generated by the propeller. You know, we're not getting a lot of extra airflow through those actual cylinders there. So let's go ahead and replicate our experiment. I'll go ahead and push the throttle all the way forward. You can see our cylinder head temperature is coming up and it's coming up at basically the exact same rate as it was before on account of the fact that again, we don't have a lot of airflow going into it. So right now we're putting our engine in danger and look at our, <laughs> everything's getting unstable here. I'll go ahead and give myself a little bit of right foot to keep itself on the runway here. So you can see how incredibly dangerous this is. And a lot of people say you should run your engine up at full power on the ground anyway, because you're just gonna overheat things. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this throttle back. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and pop up in the air, watch this. Ah, there we go. So now that we're up in a little bit of altitude, we finished up our climb, we can think a little bit about this some more. So now we have some cooling airflow. We don't just have a little bit, we have a lot. We have 140 knots of cooling airflow, plus the big propeller hanging off the front. When we come over here and take a look at our instrumentation though, you'll notice I've left everything at full power and we're turbocharged to make things a little bit more aggressive. Come down here and looking, you also notice my cow flaps are slammed open and the engine's actually pretty warm and my oil temperature is pretty warm too. So in this particular case, um, this is basically the upper limit of how hot we can get things, how we have it now. But as you know, we don't actually fly with our cow flaps all the way open and our throttle put all the way forward. You know, we usually set some kind of cruise power that's going to reduce the total fuel that we're burning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and set ourselves up with a pretty typical cruise here. We'll do uh, 24 and 23. That's kind of the classic. 24 and 
24 and 23. So we're at 24 inches manifold pressure. We're about 2290. Uh, don't make yourself insane trying to set this, by the way. It's really tough to do this in the real world. The sim, it's real easy. So we've reduced that power. And if we take a look at our temperatures here, we can see that the cylinder head temperature is already slowly starting to hike itself to the left. Now that's good news because that means that we're going to be okay as far as you're not melting anything on our little journey here. But believe it or not, over time, this is going to slowly hike further and further and further to the left because we have so little power and so much air. The way we solve that is by coming down to our cow flaps and slamming them into the closed position. So not only now are we more aerodynamic, we are now going to keep the engine closer to the optimal temperature that it needs to operate at. In this case, it's going to basically stick right there this entire flight. Now, one of the things I said at the beginning is there's other factors other than airspeed and power settings that are going to have an impact. And one of the big ones is actually going to be this little red handle called your mixture. Whenever you pull this thing back, you're reducing the amount of fuel going to the engine. And that's a good thing. You're going to end up reducing on leading in the pipes. The pipes, what am I saying? Some of the components of the aircraft. And it's going to make the whole thing run smoother. But the thing you got to remember is as you send less fuel, you're also going to slowly increase your temperatures because you're going to be burning hotter. Uh, the easiest way to look at it is we have our TIT gauge, which is our turbulent inlet temperature. This is basically our exhaust gas temperature. So watch this. I'm going to go ahead and start leaning out the mixture. The first thing you probably notice is my RPM jumped a little bit. Mm, improving my fuel economy already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continually keep, keep leaning, keep leaning, just pulling that throttle back. And what you're probably noticing is my EGT or my TIT is slowly starting to rise because now the air and the fuel are starting to mix more evenly. You can see already how far back I have that handle. These turbocharged ones are always fun to try to lean. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. You can see it slowly rising still. I wish I could zoom in even further. Whoa, look at how high it's gotten. Wow. A little more. See how it's getting really, 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 really high? Woo, that's some high temperatures compared to what it was. All right, and that's it. That's our peak. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push in just a tiny bit extra. And that's going to give us a little bit of extra fuel that we don't need. Now, one thing you probably observed is as we were doing that, your cylinder head temperatures started rising back to the right again. The reason it started doing that is because now, as you can see, everything is burning hotter, even though it is now burning more efficiently. Now, if this were a really, really hot day and we were at low altitude and a higher power setting, you'd actually have to be very careful here. And we could always come down, slam open the cow flaps. And what that would do is that will slowly, gradually start to shift the temperature back to the left here. But of course, by opening up the cow flaps, you're also creating a situation whereby you're going to go ahead in and, um, make more drag for yourself, which is going to affect your cruise speed. Fortunately, in this particular model, that's not going to make that much of a difference. So let's go ahead and see how cold we can get this engine here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the cow flaps. I'm going to go ahead and push the mixture in, and I'm going to reduce to a very, very low cruise. Let's come down to 20 and 21. We go right about there perfect so my mixture is totally rich notice i'm not even in the green for my exhaust gas temperature anymore but also notice my little cylinder head temperature is slowly starting to migrate to the left it will eventually make its way over unfortunately the reason again the way they model this this would be a little bit quicker in the real world as it starts slipping but the big thing here is um you're not going to have a massive drop and the reason you're not going to have a massive drop is because even though we've reduced our power We've also decreased our air speed. So as you can see, you run into a situation where you can't win. Now, the other time you need to be think about this, not just in cruise, is in climb. Let's say I want to climb up to 9,000 feet. Go ahead and pre-select 9,000. We'll go ahead and uh, order up a vertical speed. And we'll order up a vertical speed of, uh, let's call it 500 feet per minute. I'm now going to go ahead and apply full power. We'll do full RPM too, why not? And I notice what's going to happen almost immediately. The aircraft is actually picking up speed here because, again, we just applied a lot of power. We're only doing 550 feet per minute, which is not bad. Notice my cylinder head temperature is still staying relatively constant here on account of the fact that we've increased our airflow at the same time as we've left our cow flaps in that position. So if I was a bad person, I could go ahead and do that to my cow flaps. I could do this to my mixture. And I could go ahead and order up something like, uh, I'll order up, uh, I don't know, I'll call it 1,200 feet per minute. So what I'm doing here is not only am I running my engine very lean, which has increased my temperatures, I've got my cow flaps closed, and my airspeed is starting to drift off. 1,200 feet, eh, that's not even enough. More! There we go, 1,700 feet per minute. That'll get us slowing down. 
So now what's happening is if you look at my cylinder head temperature, it is starting to wander back to the right again because everything's starting to get fantastically hot because we've reduced all of our different elements here. Now there's a lot of things we could do. We could reduce our climbing speed. We could increase our physical speed here. That makes a big difference. We could also enrich in our mixture a little bit to try to take the edge off of it. Again, that's the fun thing with turbochargers that even at this, I can push this all the way in. Not gonna make much of a difference because I'm at such a high power here. But you can see that, man, does this thing get hot in a hurry. So go ahead and open up the cow flaps and we'll go ahead and reduce that vertical speed a little bit. There we go, 1,000 feet per minute, looks good. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna watch the cylinder head temperature again, slowly start making its way back to the left here. So what are the takeaways? Uh, there's a bunch of different factors that control how hot your engine is. Now, if you have a Rotax engine, this is all out of the water because that's a liquid cold, and that's a very, very different way to do it. Big things you want to keep in mind is the airspeed that you're using has the biggest impact of the temperature of your engine. The more airspeed, the cooler your engine's going to be, even at a higher power setting. That's one of the kind of the nice things about it. Things you want to be mindful of is with these big, big aircraft like this, if you're climbing or you're ever going to be under a high power, low speed, you've got to open your cow flaps. It's going to keep everything cold. Vice versa, if we needed to descend we run into an interesting opposite problem where we basically need to close everything up and keep our speed moderate so that the aircraft does not cool down too quickly. Again, not a flight simulator problem, but a real world problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to level this off right here, and I'm just going to kind of show you my point here. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the cow flaps open. I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back. I'm going to go ahead and select an altitude of 1,500, and we'll go ahead and do vertical speed mode, and we'll go ahead and say uh, come down at, we'll do 500 feet per minute. Now, we're running into an interesting problem here because basically we're allowing the air engine to get too cool too fast. Actually, we're going to come float down here over here. You can actually watch my cylinder head temperature is starting to head the other way. It's not jamming over to the left on account of the fact that our airspeed is so low. So if we want it to be extremely brutal, let's, let, let's, be, let's be brutal plus plus here. There we go. That should be brutal plus plus. So now we have tons of cooling air which is like going to be coming at us in just a second here. And not to mention, uh, we've got very, very, very low power setting. In the real world, when you do this, this goes and shoots off to the left like that. I can actually pull back the blue handle this time and uh, de-increase my airspeed even further. Like I said, this gets pretty dangerous. Eh, 2,000 feet per minute is not enough. Give me 3,000 feet per minute. Let's really pop some ears in the passengers here. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. All right, cylinder head temperature. There you go. So now it is the coldest the cylinders have been this entire flight until we actually took off there. So again, if we just let this go, it would get colder and colder and colder and colder. And you'd basically be shot cooling your engine, which again, you can read all about that on OPA. So what we're going to do is we're going to prevent that from happening. You know, be a little more careful with our descents here. I'm going to order up a more reasonable descent. 1,000 feet per minute. Looks good. And I'm also going to leave in some power. Notice that we have a white region. I'm going to leave it right at 15 inches. I'll leave the RPM up just to help reduce our speed. So we've closed up our cow flaps in order to protect it. We've also are using some power on the way down. And now what will happen is the cylinder head temperature will more or less stay roughly where it was before on the way down as we you know, do our little descent here. At the same time as we're keeping everything safe. If we need to suddenly level off and add power, we'd still be okay to do so because we have plenty of speed here. So as you can see, keeping an airplane engine cool can be tricky. Now, modern engines have FADEC, which will actually adjust flaps for you and things like that. But for us, you have to actually, if you have a bigger plane, is actually manipulate that. What makes this super fun is when you have big engines, like, uh, you know, those radials that displace, you know, 1,760 cubic inches, and you have to actually milk them at different settings constantly as you take off and adjust things in order to keep them at the proper temperatures. I remember an old-timer was once telling me that all these old airplane engines were like peanut butter. They melt when they get hot, they crack when they get cold. Obviously, we don't have to worry about that in flight sim, but if you're looking for that little added bit of realism, just something to be paying attention to. Enjoy.